so the three distinct parties are client application which is medium.com resource owner which is me and oauth service provider which is these applications so if i go on sign in google so google is the oauth service provider hey hi everyone welcome back to the channel this is asim and today we're going to talk about oauth and i would explain the what why and how of oauth then we would see a lab on oauth where we would see how implicit grant when not implemented properly and can be exploited to take over any of the account on the particular client application so for that we would be using a port circle lab so stay tuned till the end and if you haven't checked out my previous video go and check that out it was on lineage os and android ssl pinning it was the third part of that so yeah let's get started with this So the first question is, what is OAuth? So OAuth stands for Open Authentication, and here we will be talking about OAuth 2.0, which is very different from its predecessor OAuth 1.0. OAuth 2.0 is the one that you would find in almost all the websites, and it was proposed by Microsoft in an RFC in October 2012. OAuth was originally developed to transfer data between two websites. Uh, yeah, you might think a bit differently because if you would have seen OAuth authentication on any of the websites like let's say medium or instagram where you could log in through your facebook account or your google account so you see that okay you are using it for authentication so that was later on developed initially it was only developed to transfer data from one website to another without giving the password of that particular website so let let me give you an example of that so let's say you have a third party website where you could design greetings card and you want to send it to all your email addresses so instead of copying the all individual email address and pasting it into a third party website what the third party website does is it implements the oauth protocol and it adds a what do you say a connection to your google account uh, asking for only your contacts so this is the scope that's being defined the contacts one so once you authorize the particular server to access your contacts so google would happily give the contact list to this third party website and then this third party website could use those email addresses to send the greetings card to them so that was the original concept of over 2.0 to transfer data between websites now let's talk about how does oauth work so oauth involves three parties first is a client application the second is the resource owner and third is the oauth service provider so to explain this these distinct parties let me take you to a website called medium.com probably a lot of you would have heard about it already if not it's a website where people write blog posts and such so uh, we uh, so this medium.com is the client application now let let me show you this sign in so once i click on the sign in button it shows me various options to sign in from there is the sign in with google there is the sign in facebook apple and twitter so these different uh, vendors these are the oauth service provider and the resource owner so that's me because i'm the resource here right so they are transferring my data to their website so i'm the resource and that particular data is being owned by me so i'm the resource owner here so the three distinct parties are client application which is medium.com resource owner which is me and oauth service provider which is these applications so if i go on sign in google so google is the oauth service provider in the oauth service provider there uh, again two things there is this authorization service uh, authorization service provider and then there is this resource service provider so once you click on sign in with google uh, there would this you would see a pop up where you could choose your accounts so this is the authorization part once you click on one of these accounts and you authorize the medium.com to okay log in with this particular account the medium.com gets a code and then in exchange of that code it now ask the resource server to give the data to it it's like an api so you get a token and that token is valid for asim shre so medium exchanges that token for my data so that's the part where it interacts with the resource server so this whole process this is called a oauth flow and because the specification is a bit lenient there are a lot of oauth flows but the main or the major two are authorization code grant and implicit code grant or implicit flow so i'll be first talking about authorization code grant because it involves a few more steps compared to implicit code grant 
and once you understand authorization code grant implicit code grant is just like skipping a few steps so that's way easier than that to show the oauth authorization code flow i have a local application i would be posting the code of it on my github as well so you could check the description if you want to uh, test it on your local machine so what this application does is it uses google oauth to get the credentials of the user or to authorization code of the user and then it tries to fetch the profile the name and the basic information about the user so let me go through the flow i have already set my bird proxy here so i am using foxy proxy to do that and here is my bird running so let's click on the login button it would go to the google screen chooser and here on the bottom you could see the scopes that being set so what the day what is the data that's being sent by google to this third party application so google will share name email address language preference and profile picture with this particular application which whose name happened to be project-2137 something so this is the name so let me choose my account so this would help the application get the authorization code and in return with that it would get the data from google's resource server so here you could see i am getting my email my first name my last name and my profile picture as well so if you go on with this and open in work tab you might see my profile picture here so yeah that's me yeah cool so let's check the traffic on this one first disable this so this was the first request the login one it redirected us to google's account choosing page from here we would be getting a response code and this is the i think the response code here we are getting so the document has moved to localhost auth state and this is the get request where we are getting the oauth code so this is the code that's being used and this code is exchanged for uh, for the token so let me show you this in repeater so here is the code that was being sent so it's a it's a previous request that i have because these codes are one time code so once you once the application is already consumed that you cannot do it again so what i did was i dropped the request from there and copied it to repeater so once you send this to google's resource server which happens to be oauth2.googleapis.com/token so there is a post endpoint and you send this on there with the client id and client secret grant type also needs to be mentioned and the redirect uri so once you have that you get a access token and you get the id token so if you decode this id token you would get all the details like the first name last name profile pic etc this access token is valid for 1 hour so 3599 seconds or 3600 seconds are basically equivalent to 1 hour so this access token is valid for that particular time so if if the application wants to access the user's data for in within an hour it could use this particular access token again to get that data so that's the oauth flow uh, if you want i could show you here the flow is here so yeah this is the client application that was my localhost 5000 browser user agent the uh, uh, firefox window oauth service api this second screen so this is the user login and consent screen was the google account user screen once the user authorizes it the authorization code was sent back to this callback so this callback was the question mark oauth equal to state one and then this code was exchanged with the server for an access token and this access token was given back to the application which was valid for 1 hour that access token was again sent to the user endpoint to get the user data and then you the user was logged in on the basis of the email that was there in the received from google's api so it's basically outsourcing the authentication part i'm asking google hey google please let me know which this user is and whatever email you say that this user is i would happily accept that this is the particular user so if it says that it's joy biden at the rate america.gov.us so it would log me in as joy biden there so that's the authorization code grant flow now let's talk about the implicit code grant so there's just these particular step uh, there is one step that's missing from there so instead of uh, sending the authorization code grant it directly sends the access token in implicit grant flow to the client application and client application then does the api call to get the data so you might ask 
uh, what's the need for this? Why not every application does that? Why do you need to have uh, authorization code and then get uh, API access token and then do that, right? So authorization code is, uh, that flow is basically more secure because it issues a one-time token. Let's say there is this bug through which the auth code is being leaked, right? So even if the auth code is being leaked, the user won't be able to know the client ID and the client secret there. So in one way, they won't be able to get the access token. So now you might ask that if that's the case, why not every application uses that, right? So see, uh, in some cases, it might, it might be futile to do that. Like, let's say you have a mobile application. So if you embed the client ID and client secret in itself, then there's no point of uh, going through the authorization code grant, so, right? Implicit grant, it would essentially be an implicit grant because you have already embedded your client ID and client secret there. So that's why uh, implicit grant flow and authorization code grant flow both are still prevalent. So in the web application where the whole authorization thing is being done on third party thing. So there you could use the authorization code grant. Whereas implicit grant can be used where there is no secret way or there is no safe way to store the client secret. So now I think you have understood the basic concepts of it. Now let's take a dive into a lab of code sugar that would help you understand more and that would clear you some of the concepts as to why and how it's happening. So this is the first lab, uh, authentication bypass via OAuth implicit flow. So let's try this. So first it says the lab uses an OAuth service to allow users to log in with the social media account. Flawed validation by the client application makes it possible for an attacker to log into other users account without knowing their password. To solve the lab, log into Carlos's account. His email address is this, this. You can log in with your own social media account using the following credentials. It is Wiener Peter. So let me copy this, access the lab. So we have to hijack Carlos's account here. And we have the credentials for Wiener. So we'll check that one. So have a notice on this URL. This is AC4716, 1F6. Uh, I'm saying this because uh, we would be adding two different URLs. One would be the social auth login and this would be this particular application. Let me enable my burp here as well. Burp. Cool. I think the traffic should be going with through my burp now. Let me clear this. So now you could see AC8F1. So this is the uh, social media thing. Wiener and the password is Peter. So let's sign in here. I will save. So we like to block is requesting access to profile and email data the way we saw in the Google case. So yeah, we would like it to access that. So we like blog is a uh, OAuth service provider here. Oh, sorry, it's the client application that's requesting the data. So we like blog is the client application here. Now if I go to my account, uh, it would show me as Wiener and Hotdog. And what we have to do is, we had to get the Carlos's account, right? So let me show you the bug here. So now we have the whole flow checked here. Let's see this. Uh, I think we could hide this. I don't usually hide this, but SVG apply. We don't want that. Okay, so the, these requests are basically the actual V like blog application and AC81. So these are the, these two requests are the, uh, the third party social authentication thing. So yeah, so let's see this. So I have highlighted two requests. Uh, these two requests are from my client application. As you could see AC47. Here you could see in this part, it's redirecting us to this, our secure, um, like our client application. Here it has the access token here in this URL and expires in 3600 seconds, token type, bearer type, and what are the different scopes are there. So it's redirecting us to that endpoint. And this is the one, let me show you. So it's the OAuth callback thing. So this is the OAuth callback request. And we have that particular data there. Now with that particular auth token, what, what we are going to do is we are going to use the authenticate endpoint. So this authenticate endpoint is for the client application. 
So on the authenticate endpoint, we are using that token, the auth token that we got from the third party website. And we are adding the email address and authenticating it with the client application, the actual application to log into that application. So what we have to do is we have to replace this email with Carlos's email. And if the endpoint of the backend code uh, doesn't check the actual token for which it is valid for, like it was valid for Wiener, right? But we are changing it for uh, Carlos. So if it's not checking that, it would help us like uh, log into the account as Carlos user. So if we copy this and the question original session, let's copy this. So let's say congratulations, you solved the lab. So what happened was this token was received uh, through the implicit grant flow and this token was uh, basically whatever the email value was being sent with the token the endpoint thought that or the client application thought that that particular user is the one that got this token for access to the uh, resource server or the OAuth service provider so that's why it uh, it logged it logged us in into the carlos's account yeah you could see your name is username is carlos email is carlos and something like that. So that's pretty much it and that was the implicit grant flow lab. If you have any questions, make sure you put down in the comment section and let me know what other videos you would want me to make. I am still trying to make some of the basic OAuth uh, vulnerabilities video. I am also planning a video on the DevSecOps thing. So yeah, do check out the channel for more videos on this and hope you have a nice day. Thank you.